following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The Secret of Satan In this first graphic by an unknown painter inspired by the famous English poem Paradise Lost by Milton we find Satan leaving the court of chaos and at the bottom the following quotation if the Logos surged from within the unknowable divine, the devil gave him liberty to do it. Samael Aun Beor. This illustrates our own particular individual divine primordial condition. Satan is leading all of our chaotic elements out of chaos in order to rebel against the harmony of the universe created and established by the gods. It also illustrates the cause of the rising of the universe. Cosmologically, we have to state that in esotericism, there are two types of chaos. First, the chaos in repose or inactive. Second, the moving or active chaos. This is very descriptive. Satan is taking all of those passive elements from the chaos in repose in order for these to go into activity. These chaotic elements can only go into activity by manifesting themselves in the universe through the creative energy. To understand the arising of the universe, we have to comprehend the three aspects of the absolute abstract space. Above the graphic of the tree of life, we find three mysterious names written in Hebrew, namely, the Ain, the Ain Sof, and the Ains of Or. In English, these names mean respectively nothingness, limitless, and limitless light. These are the three aspects of the absolute abstract space within which we find the cause of the universe. In order to comprehend this, we have to apply the word gnosis, which is a Greek word that means knowledge. Thus, we have to state from a Kabbalistic point of view that within the bosom of the eternal universal cosmic common father, there exist three types of monads. Monad from the Greek monas, meaning unity. Let us imagine the abstract absolute space like a limitless ocean where we find these 
three types of drops or unities that form such a limitless vast space. Each one of us, without exception, is the final outcome of a particle from that absolute abstract space, which abides within the most remote profoundness of our being. This particle is called the Ein Sof, which is our own particular atomic star that has the duty of knowing itself. This is why we state that there are three types of monads, or better said, three types of Ein Sofs or unities within the absolute abstract space. Regarding this, a 12th century Arabic proverb states, Number one, whosoever knows not, and knows not that he knows not, is in chaos. Have pity on him. Number two, whosoever knows not, and knows that he knows not, wants to learn. Teach him. Number three, whosoever knows, and knows that he knows, is a wise man. Listen to him. The monads that know not and know not that they know not are precisely the monads who form the disorderly chaos, which Satan here in this graphic is guiding into creation. These monads had to be impelled by Satan into creation because the creation of the universe occurs in order for these monads to acquire cognizance, knowledge of themselves. This is the only objective or reason for the universe to exist. We can call the second type of monads the Socratic type of monads, because Socrates said, I only know that I know not. For a chaotic monad to reach the level of a Socratic monad is only possible through creation. Thus, the earth of chaotic monads and Socratic monads are in tohu vevohu, meaning empty and formless. Yet the Socratic monads who know that they do not know, they know how to hover upon the face of the waters in order to make light in the darkness. The third type of monads are those who know and know that they know, and therefore they understand. The monads that know and the Socratic monads and the chaotic monads in Sanskrit, the monads that know and know that they know are named Paramartha Satyas. They are immersed within the bosom of the Absolute or Universal Cosmic Common Father, very far away from the limited comprehension of the first and second types of monads. In this universe, we are the final outcome of either the monads that know not and know that they do not know, or the monads that know not and know not that they do not know. Master Samael Aun Beor said, the Paramartha Satyas, those ineffable beings of light, who are immersed within the bosom of the Absolute, every now and then descend from their elevated region in order to help mankind. They are the great avatars, the great reformers, who from the dawn of times have watched over humanity. 
therefore, the universe exists in order for the monads to acquire cognizance of themselves. Fallen angels also exist. They are those who know and know not that they know, because they fell asleep and lost their degree of reasoning. Thus they need to wake up. They fell by their own free will, because the eternal universal cosmic common father, the absolute abstract space, is not a dictatorial city. Understand that a city is not a deity. Deity is a term that applies to any monad that manifests in the universe. Yet, city is a term that applies to the absolute abstract space, which is not a deity, but that which is beyond any type of divine or human personality. It is beyond any type of human or divine comprehension. Yet, we need to cabalistically comprehend what CET is. This in order to understand a little about the absolute abstract space. Since the universe is created, exists, emerges from that. Each monad carries in its bosom, the three creative atoms of the Absolute, named in Kabbalah, Keter, Chokhmah, Bina. In Christianity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Hinduism, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. In Hinduism, there is a phrase that states, Brahma sleeps, and Brahma needs to awaken. In other words, para Brahman or para Brahman, the Ainsof is asleep, and in order to awaken, he needs to put into activity Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. So. In order for any monad to acquire Paramartha, awakened consciousness, it needs to express its own creative powers. In the beginning, the expression of the monad's own creative powers had to be guided by the cosmo creators, or those who know and know that they know. So in order to perform this creation, and to acquire knowledge or cognizance of oneself, the solar abstract absolute space contracts and emanates from itself that which Gurdjieff names the Theomert Malogos, meaning God's word that transforms. This Theomert Malogos, or transforming word power of God, is what in this day and age people call Lucifer. Now, the word Lucifer is not found in the Hebrew Bible, although many religious fanatical people associate the Latin word Lucifer with the name Hillel, found in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, where it is stated in English. How hast thou fallen from the heavens, Hillel ben Shahar, to wail, son of the dawn? Lucifer is placed there instead of the Hebrew Hillel, which does not make any sense because Hillel does not mean Lucifer, but rather to howl or to wail. Lucifer is not a Hebrew word, but a Latin word. 
It is a translation from the Hebrew into Latin by the monks of the Catholic Church in order to explain the descent of the light. Lux, luci in Latin. In Latin, Lucifer means light carrier. Luci, lux, light, plus ferre, carry, also Greek, ferrein, to carry. Lucifer relates to Ben Shahar, the son of the dawn, or Venus, the bright and morning star. It is related to what Jesus says in Revelation, verse 22, verse 16. I am the root and the offspring of David, and Lucifer, Ben Shahar, the bright and morning star. We have also stated in many lectures that the fairy or carrier of the light is the fire, which in Greek mythology is carried by Prometheus, who in Greek means he who sees before the event because of his Prometheia or foresight. So the Hebrew Hillel is erroneously translated as the Latin Lucifer, which is the same Greek Prometheus. So, again, we do not find the word Lucifer in Hebrew, which is the original language of the Bible, because Lucifer is a Latin word. This is very important to comprehend, because in Hebrew, the shadow of, of Ben Shahar the Teomertmalogos, the son of the dawn, the creator Elohim, is called Shatan or Satan, which in Hebrew means the adversary. So Satan is the adversary of Ben Shahar, Lucifer, the Logos. In Gnosticism, we explain that Satan, the adversary, is precisely the downfall of Ben Shahar, the prime emanation of the light of the solar absolute, the Ains of Or, through all of the Sephiroth of the Tree of Life, to finally reach the tent Sephira Malkut, and resting precisely in the very center, in the core of it, in the ninth sphere, sex. Regrettably, because of the chaotic state that we have and any monad has within Malkut, the earth, our physicality, that luminous force named Ben Shahar in Hebrew and Lucifer in Latin, is transformed into Shatan because of our ignorance. Thus, Satan, the shadow of the light, is the only element that we have from Ben Shahar, the light of the dawn, and with which, with which we can transform ourselves in order to become like Elohim. And eventually, para Marta Satyas, that is, into beings who know and know that they know. This is why in the third chapter of the book of Genesis, after the seven days of creation are finished, Nahash, the serpent, appears in the tree of knowledge and says, Elohim knows that in the day you eat, better said, transmute the fruit of the tree of knowledge, your eyes will be open, and you will be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, verse 5. Thus, knowing good and evil is a whole object matter of creation. This is why the Master Samael on the Or wrote in his book Tarot and Kabbalah. 
If the Logos, the Theomertma Logos, surged from within the unknowable divine, the devil gave him liberty to do it. Indeed, since if the devil or shadow of God is not present there in the moment of creation, carrying all of those chaotic elements in order to acquire knowledge, what then will be the objective of the universe? What then will be the reason for this vast megalocosmos or the infinite to exist? The planet Earth is not the only planet that has monads. Monads exist everywhere on all of the planets of the universe. We earthlings are not the only ones that have the privilege of existing within this universe. Despite what ignoramuses say or may think, we are not the only planet with human beings on it, and we are not the center of the universe. Understand that monads inhabit the millions of Earths or planets of the universe. In Kabbalah, our Ein Sof is represented by the Hebrew letter He, and the three primary creative atoms that it has in its bosom, which are represented by the Hebrew letters Yod, He, Vav. Thus, if we take these three Hebrew letters plus the He of the Ein Sof, we then have yod Hey vav Hey, which is the sacred Kabbalistic name of God, that in the Bible is translated as Jehovah. Now it is written, I will walk before Jehovah in the lands of the living, Psalm 116 verse 9. By lands the psalmist means our earth or world, which is one of seven worlds or earths, rounds, referred to by David, the Zohar. Before the creation of this round, or present heavens and earth, the Teomert Malogos created other earths and destroyed them, by reducing them to a state of tohu vevohu, formless and void. Our present earth, or fourth round, will not escape the fate of those previous Earths. This is what we have to understand regarding the statement, if the Logos, the Teomertma Logos, search from within the unknowable divine, the devil gave him liberty to do it. Thus, the universe relies on two activities, or aspects, namely, the cosmic day and the cosmic night, or what is called in Sanskrit Maha Mamvantara and Maha Pralaya. Mamvantara means cosmic day or manifestation of creation, and Pralaya means cosmic night or dissolution of matter. Maha means great. We have to state and clarify that there does not exist one cosmic day for the entire existing universe, but rather many cosmic days exist for the different cosmic unities. For example, within this auditorium, we have many people of different ages who were born on different days and who will die on different days. Yet all of us are here together now. If someone comes and states that we were all born on the same day and will die on the same day, that will be absurd. Likewise, the universe planets, suns, comets, etc., were born on different days and will die on different days. 
Each cosmic unit has its own particular individual cosmic day and particular individual cosmic night. This is how we have to understand the creation of the universe. Not as that idiotic theory of the Big Bang portrays it to be. Only a dimwit will stupidly assume that the universe started from an explosion that absolutely happened. The atomic bomb was created by the evil intelligence of ignoramuses, and it did not explode absolutely. Therefore, let us comprehend the cosmic intelligence behind creation, which is what we are talking about here. We need that knowledge, that intelligence in us. Thus, during the manifestation of the cosmic day of a planet, not all of the manifested monads acquire cognizance or the goal of knowing themselves, even though some of them perform super efforts in order to attain the knowledge of themselves. Thus, when the cosmic night or the solution of that particular planet or cosmic unit enters into activity, then the monads that acquire the knowledge of themselves return triumphant into the bosom of the absolute. Yet, those who did not, because of their many mistakes, have to return later in order to pay their cosmic karma during the next cosmic day or cosmic manifestation of that particular unit. Or, as it is stated in Hindu philosophy, if you did not achieve the goal in this present manifestation or reincarnation, then do not worry. Maybe in the next reincarnation you will. Of course only if you continue doing your cosmic duty. Thus, as the human soul reincarnates or returns, likewise the soul of the worlds return. Many are the monads that attain higher knowledge and therefore enter into higher levels of consciousness. Notwithstanding, they did not achieve self-realization. These are the gods or Elohim that committed many mistakes. This is why they had to return into the universe in order to continue their active, active manifestation. Since in this universe, there exists an eternal universal law named karma or cause and effect. Karma cannot ex coexist within the abstract absolute space. Therefore, if there is karma there, it is in suspension, since everything during the cosmic night is in absolute happiness. Thus, when that cosmic night ends and another cosmic day begins, the gods that did not perfect themselves have to return into manifestation, which they don't like. Because when you have knowledge of yourself and the universe, you then enjoy your position within the bosom of the eternal universal common cosmic father. But the law is the law and it has to be fulfilled. And the one who knows perfectly well <coughs> the law of Katansia, karma of the gods, is their own particular individual Satan, since Satan exists in each one of us, yet in different levels. Thus, if our own particular individual Satan is dark, black as coal, it is because we did not achieve self-realization yet, and some of our cosmic elements are still in chaos. 
But if that Satan is luminous, it is because we have transformed him into Lucifer. Then, if such a monad wants to descend, let that monad descend. Yet, if such a monad does not want to descend, the law does not impel it to do so. The law respects its freedom. Since this type of monad is free of karma, it is an enlightened monad. Such is the beauty of the Paramartha Satyas. One of those Paramartha Satyas, whose name is Averamento, came to this planet. People on this earth know him by the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He acquired such perfection in past cosmic days. He descended by his own will in order to help this planet. And as you know, we didn't welcome him very well. Anyhow, this is why it is written that because Jesus defeated his Satan in many ways, he transformed his Satan into Lucifer. But what happened within him is not what happens within us. Within us, the story is different. Within us, Satan is very fat and as dark as a gorilla. This is obvious. Look at our planet. It is in chaos. And this chaos comes from within each one of us. We are used to accusing the government, the president, the queen, or the pope of this chaos, as if we are mixed ship. Let the president, the queen, and the pope take care of their own particular individual Satan, since they are also in chaos. But let us understand that every one of us are forming a part of this chaotic humanity. Moreover, regarding the gods or Elohim, the Zohar, quoting the book of Jeremiah, states, Thus shall you say unto them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. Jeremiah 10 verse 11 For there are other Elohim at the side of Bar-esh, the Sabbath, the son of fire, the Theomermalogos, the Holy One, the Zohar. So indeed, Bar-esh, the son of fire, created six Elohim, the heavens and the earth. Since he was the seventh or Sabbath of the Lord. Thus, all of us, even the Elohim, have the duty of whitening Satan. And in order for us to do it, we all have to practice the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness, about which we have already given many lectures. Let us now look at the second graphic and read what Madame Blavatsky stated in regard to this topic. The shadow of the Hindu Lucifer, the Maha Asura, is also said to have become envious of the Theomirtmalogos, or Creator's resplendent light, and at the head of inferior Asuras, not gods, but spirits, or monads who know not, to have rebelled against Brahma, for which Shiva hurled him down to Patala, Malkut. The Secret Doctrine by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. Indeed, Mahasura, who is also called Mahasura, and Mahish Asura, is the shadow of Brahma, the creator, the Hindu Satan who unleashed evil and terror all over the world. Mahasura was hurled by Shiva into Patala, 
the inferior world because he could not be killed by Shiva, Brahma or Vishnu. This was because of his boon with God Brahma, according to which he cannot be destroyed by Indra or any deity or man. Thus, by combining forces, by means of the Pankatattva ritual, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva collected all of the divine forces of the gods and created the goddess Durga, Devi Kundalini, who, with fire as a ferocious lion as her carrier, roar towards the den of Mahasura. Thus, after night days of continuous battle, in the Enneagram, Mahasura was finally beaten by Durga. Now let us look at the third graphic and read what Master Samael Onveor stated in regard to this topic. When the heart of the solar system began to palpitate after the profound night of the great Pralaya, thereupon the gods from the dawn began to weep. Remember, son of mine, that the gods also err. Those divine Elohim wrote their erratum on the cosmic page of the past cosmic day. Wouldst thou comprehend now the motive, the real cause of the universe, the vital secret of the conscious life, the desire for life? When the dawn was dawning, I saw the causal logos moving upon the face of the waters. Do not begin the dawn of the Mahamanvantara yet, cried the holy gods amidst their sobs. Useless was their begging, vain their lament. Occasionally the great being stopped for a while in order to read the karma from those resplendent children of the dawn. Samael on Beor. So that great being that was moving upon the face of the Akashic waters of heaven and who occasionally stopped for a while in order to read the karma from those resplendent children of the dawn was the Kalsa Logos or Christus Lucifer. We have to understand the two aspects of the light. Lucifer is a prime emanation of the abstract solar absolute space or Ein Sof Or or the Theomert Malogos the superior aspect of the light it is the transforming word of God that eventually projects its shadow in us since the Ein Sof cannot enter into his own creation, into the matter, it irradiates by means of its divine uncreated light, a light power whose shadow is what is called Satan. Thus, its shadow enters into us since the soul has to build a solar connection with such a light within us. If we lose connection with our own particular Ein Sof, then what will be of us? We would be eternally lost. O Kiranok, the ray of creation, descends through many cosmoses, and at the very bottom is Malkut, which is our physicality. Thus, when we lose connection to the light, then we are lost. Yet, such a connection is attained again within us by defeating his shadow, who is called Shatan. Yes, Satan is the shadow of the Theomert Malogos, or Christus Lucifer in Latin. That Christus Lucifer was the true light, which lightens every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. 
But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God in the ninth sphere. And through tantric chastity the word of God was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of only begotten of the solar absolute, the Father full of grace and truth. John 1 verses 9 to 14. Thus, Christus Lucifer appears before creation, above the tree of life, precisely in the ends of ore, because the word the world was made by him. He is a Theomert Malogos, the prime emanation of the solar absolute, who reads the karma from those resplendent children of the dawn within the Akashic records. These poor children prayed, they cried a lot, as did their mother with fervor. Hence everything remained in silence. Then amidst the quenched sobs of the waves only the rumor of existence was heard. During the profound cosmic night the vital causes of existence were destroyed. Then the karma of those divine and human remained in suspension. The invisible which is and the visible which was remained within the eternal not being, the unique being. Upon the silvery waves of the warm and transparent atmosphere of any universe that agonizes as erect and sorrowful Ophelia, the tender serenade of life goes floating by. Afterwards the worlds are dissolved, the night of the great Pralaya arrives, the soul is thrilled with joy, it is the spark that returns into the flames of the being, which indeed to our vain reasoning is non-being. Samael Anbeor. It is written that when the Teomert Malogos or word of God infiltrates the vast abstract space, he finds that substance that is called Akasha, which penetrates and permeates the entire space. In the Akasha is where the cosmic errata is recorded. The mother of those resplendent children of the dawn is the Ein Sof which in Kabbalah is symbolized by the letter He. And the three primary forces within her are symbolized by the three Hebrew letters yod He vav Thus, yod He vav He is the Kabbalistic name of our own particular star. Listen, every child or monad has a different secret sacred name. Yet, understand, in Kabbalah, such a secret, sacred name is always represented as yod he vav he which the Bible translates as Jehovah. Now, the ray of creation that penetrates into matter from the ends of Or, and that is called the ray of Okidanok, is the outcome of a connection of the Akasha with the uncreated light of the Teomer Malogos and of the three primary forces issued from our own particular individual ends of. In other words, the ray of Okidanok is the uncreated light ray projected from our own particular ends of into space, and that when permitted by the uncreated light of the Teomert Malogos, by means of a Geneotriamatsikamian contact, descends into matter. Geneotriamatsikamian from Geno's birth, descent, plus Triamatsikamno, law of three. The two former quotations are taken from the book Cosmic Teachings of Alama, which was a Christmas message by the Master Samael on Veor. 
If the readers do not have the Kabbalistic knowledge that we are explaining here, when reading this quotation, they will not understand it. Then Yeshua said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walks in darkness knows not whither he goes. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spoke Yeshua, and departed, and did hide himself from them. John 12, verses 35 and 36. When we read this verse from John the Apostle, we have to understand that these are the words of Christus Lucifer that are being expressed through the mouth of Jesus of Nazareth. Since what we call Christus Lucifer is the light from the all-noble divine. Christus from Greek Christos, anointed and Lucifer from Latin, light bringer. At the bottom of the fourth graphic, we find the Hebrew words Aur and Oz or Uz, which in Hebrew mean light and counsel, respectively. The three letters of the word Oz or Uz alchemically and esoterically relates to the three columns of the tree of life, which within us is represented by the three nadis in our spinal column, namely Ida, Pingala, and Shushumna. The letters Ajin, Vav, and Sadi of the word Uz in Hebrew represent respectively the left, central, and right columns of the Tree of Life. So, Oz reminds us of the Wizard of Oz, who the Bible describes as Job, the man in the land of Uz. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and turned away from evil. Job. One, one. So when you uh, unite the word Aur with the word Uz, we form the word Auruz or Aurus. Masi Samael Onvior stated in his book Tarot and Kabbalah, The falcon is the symbol of Aurus. The falcon of gold strengthens Aurus, which is pronounced Aurus, with the complete death of our ego. This falcon of gold is related with the sunrise. We must be in contact with the spiritual sun. The sun of the dawn is Aurus, the spiritual sun, which is a symbol of the uncreated light, which Kabbalistically is written Aurus. Aurus is the light of the sun and represented by a falcon, or the eye of Aurus. That eye is the sun that sees everything. The sun always represents the ains of Or, the cosmic Christ. This is why ancient Gnostics said while pointing at the sun, we believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, the sun. Of course, they knew the meaning of what they were saying. They did not believe that the personality or physicality of Master Jesus was the Son, since they understood that the light of Christus Lucifer expressed itself through Master Yeshua, Master Abramento, as it expresses itself through the physical Son that gives life to this planet and all the planets of this solar system. Any Son of the universe also represents the cosmic Christ. This is how we understand and comprehend Christ when we study Kabbalah and alchemy. The Egyptian hieroglyphs used the two letters KHR for Keru Aurus, which translated into a Greek Chi Ro, CHR, signifying Christos. Francis Bacon RT. So Keru is Aurus pronounced Aurus, 
the sun that rises and reaches the zenith and sets sunrise, zenith and sunset are symbols that we have to understand since they relate to the triangle or pyramid. Aurus, the sun, rises in the east and reaches its zenith in the north. The apex of the pyramid and thereafter Aurus, the sun, sets in the west. This is how the solar triangle with the eye of Aurus in the center should be understood. The 12 solar hours of the day relate to the 12 apostles or archetypes of Israel or the 12 Aurus or hours of Apollonius, Apollo, the sun. In other words, the 12 zodiacal archetypes of Chochmah, the cosmic Christ, represented by the 12 tribes of Israel, crystallize within us through Aurus, the light of the sun. This is why Jesus said, I am the light of the world, because I am, in Hebrew, Eheye, is Keter, is the light of the world that emanates from the solar absolute. Since the Son Christ cannot enter within you, he guides you through your dreams. Therefore, we need to know how to interpret those dreams where we see the sun. The Son of Midnight guides the initiates in the superior worlds. The initiates must know the symbolic movements of the Sun of Midnight. Sunrise is equivalent to the birth, to the rising, and to the manifestation of Him, etc. Sunset allegorizes the death of something, the descent of something, etc. The Sun, with complete splendor in midday, allegorizes complete plenitude, complete triumph, success of such and such initiation, etc. We are emphatically referring to the Sun Christ, the Logos, the Astral Sun. The mystics see the astral sun. He guides them along the path of the razor's edge. When the clouds of the sky are covering the astral sun, this signifies that the animal ego is still very strong within the initiate. Pisti Sophia unveiled by Samaela Umbeor. Since the sun, Christ of midday, cannot enter within us, he says she sets in the west and sends his shadow. Satan to help us to make light in the darkness. Yes, Satan is the shadow of the Lord. As we walk on a sunny day on the city streets or country roads of any town, we project our shadow and see how it walks with us. We cannot remove it as if we were Peter Pan. Our shadow will go, will follow us wherever we are. Likewise, Satan, the shadow of the Lord, the Son Christ, will not leave us no matter what we do. So the shadow of God is within us, walking always with us on the path and thus tempting us in order to show us what to do psychologically, since Satan is our psychological trainer. And therefore, this is the only thing that Satan can do. This is the only way for us to make light within our darkness and to make sense of what does not make any sense within our heads. So we have to comprehend the duality of light and darkness, Christ and Satan. We need to defeat Satan, the shadow of the Son Christ, in order to become solar men. Let us now read the book of Revelation. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, 
travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to Melkut the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Revelation 12, verses 1 through 4. Well, this is a quote that we must study profoundly. The woman crowned with 12, 12 stars, being with child, is crying, traveling in birth, in pain, is our own particular in soft. In Gnosticism, when we talk about the Divine Mother, we understand that she is related to all of those goddesses from different pantheons. Yet, in synthesis, we state that the Divine Mother has five aspects. Her first aspect is the All-Manifested Mother, which is precisely the woman clothed with the sun and crowned with twelve stars of Chokhmah, the Zodiac. The sun is the solar absolute, the ends of ore, whose light is going to place the three primary forces of the Ein Sof into Atziluth and deliver it into creation. The red highly dragon with seven heads and seven crowns standing before the woman or Ein Sof is ready to devour her light or child. It reminds us Lucifer. The constellation of the dragon has seven stars, which are the seven rays of creation, that in the world of Aziluth, in the tree of life, relates to the seven lower Sephiroth. The seven heads with seven crowns in Aziluth are the seven spirits before the throne of God. So, those Logoi or seven spirits, represents precisely the dragon in heaven, who acts according to karma. The child is the outcome of our own alchemical work. The child is the light, is Keru, Aurus, or Jesus, who is going to be born inside of us through solar alchemy. Listen ye who believe in his name. Christ is born in us not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but through alchemy of God. The child Jesus is born in us through alchemy when we reach a certain initiatic level or Venustic initiation. So the seven crowns of the dragon relate to seven Keter, which means crown in Hebrew, or the seven Logoi of the world of Atziluth, who represents the law of seven. Christ relates to the law of three, creation, namely Keter, Chokmah, and Binah, and to the law of seven, to the seven heads of the dragon, to the law that organizes the creation of Keter, Chokmah, and Binah, according to karma. Thus, according to the law of karma, the dragon, with seven heads and seven crowns, organizes all of the monads that need to know that they know not. The ten horns of the dragon relate to Malkut, the earth, to the wheel of San Zara, where the light of the sun sets and incessantly rotates, where through evolution the elemental monads positively transform the solar light 
of the seven heads of the dragon, and where, through devolution, the satanic psyche of ignoramuses negatively transforms the solar light of the seven heads of the dragon into the seven capital sins. On this planet Earth, millions of monads exist that know not that they know not. Their psyche within their physical personalities form a society of ignoramuses who think that they know, yet sadly they know not that they do not know. To be like Socrates, that is, to know that we know not, is the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of knowing ourself. For this we need guidance, and such guidance comes from any of the seven heads of the heavenly dragon, from any of the seven spirits before the throne of God in order to perform the psychological work that we need to perform. But this has to be done of our own free will, because the light of the dragon is in the world, and the world was made by him, and ignorances know him not. He comes as light, even unto those who do not believe in him. Yet, those who believe in him also receive him not. But those who receive him through sexual alchemy, to them he gives power to be born as children of God. Thus, this is not performed through fanaticism. So, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to Malkut, the earth. These stars are those monads that are already awakening in the light and for the light. The third part relates to the law of three, the law of creation, that when is misused, fortifies the tale of Satan. This is how the stars or angels fall from heaven. So those stars that the dragon cast to the earth are the fallen angels, who need to perfect themselves more and more. The earth is our physicality, because the earth is Malkut, the world, and the world was made by the fire of the dragon, the sexual power. So, in this three-dimensional world, the fire of the dragon can become good or evil. Either way, it depends on us. This is how the fallen bodhisattvas perfect themselves and confront the dragon again. And this is how Satan says to them, I will help you again by means of temptation. If you fall into temptation, you will lose everything and have to start again. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place <coughs> prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come Yeshua, salvation, and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Revelation 12, verses 5 to 10.
the path under the shade of the tree of knowledge is forbidding since Satan the shadow of the Lord as a tempting serpent places the initiates into sexual temptation and many are those who fail so it is not easy to bring the light the man Christ in order to rule the nations of iniquity that all of us have within for that we need to have a will of iron nonetheless this is the only way for us to cut up into our inner God and to his throne Satan is the only one that can accuse us day or night before the Teomert Malogos because Satan is his shadow which abides within every one of us people that commit crimes and hide them from others think that they can avoid being penalized they ignore that their crimes cannot be hidden from Satan who is the shadow of the astral light that penetrates all types of matter yes Satan the shadow of our inner monad is inside of us and knows very well how evil we are we do not know how evil you can be but your inner God knows since your inner particular individual Satan informs him about everything you think feel and do And the woman fled into the wilderness. To fly into the wilderness esoterically means to descend from Da'at into the world of matter. That is the third triangle of the tree of life, where our Divine Mother has a place prepared for God, the Holy Spirit. This place is Yesod, sex, where through sexual alchemy, we should feed her 1,260 days. One plus two plus six plus zero makes the addition of nine, the ninth sphere. This is Eden, Yesod, where we must defeat Satan. Who is this that comes out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke? Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 6. Kabbalistically, who and this? Me and Soth in Hebrew are the Holy Spirit and the Divine Mother that have to ascend as Elohim from our creative sexual waters through our spinal medulla up to the brain woe unto us who me shall deliver us out of the hand of this mighty elayam sea goddess ela ha ela the goddess that smote the egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness first book of samuel chapter 4 verse 8 so this is how elohim ela yam always bring all of the great prophets out from the wilderness jesus before doing his mission went into the wilderness thus he came from the wilderness from yesod the root of the tree of life where all the prophets have to face their own satan in the wilderness is where satan tests you tempts you this is in order to show you your psychological weakness your own chaos this is why prometheus lucifer stole the fire from the sun and delivered it to mankind that fire is a sexual creative 
fire of the Theomert Malogos, the prime emanation of the Ensoth Ore, that vibrates in Yesod, the night sphere, that in us is in our sexual organs. Behold, this is where Lucifer abides within every one of us. Temptation is fire, and the triumph over temptation is light. Yet, when we fail on their temptation, the outcome is darkness, ignorance. Yes, ignorant is what we are. This is why Prometheus, Lucifer, according to Greek mythology, is the one who made the human being. This is understandable when we understand the origin of the light of Lucifer, since in order to create the true human being inside of us, we need to know how to handle the sexual energy. Regrettably, this humanity is a slave of their sexual energy. They do not know how to control it. You know this. This is true just by looking at how sexually degenerated this humanity is. In order to conquer the dragon, we had to transform our Satan into Lucifer. And this is only possible with fire, the creative sexual fire. This is why it is written that the dragon's place was not found anymore in heaven, because through our sexual degeneration, we place the dragon in hell, within our own particular individual hell which is located within our earth, in other words, within our own physicality in the sexual organs, Yesod. Ignoramuses are looking out there for Lucifer, ignoring that they have transformed him into that Satan which they carry within and who they have enthroned within their own sinful darkness. The chaotic cosmic forces of Satan repose within the cosmic night. They cannot be absorbed by the solar absolute. This is why in the beginning of creation they are expelled from heaven because the Absolute is Absolute Happiness. Thus, when those monads, which are in chaos, start to become active, when their own Satan impels them to know themselves, they are ejected from the bosom of Elohim, the abstract Absolute Space. Master Samael on the or rot. Absolute perfection is needed <clears throat> in order not to fall from the bosom of Elohim. Any longing, as insignificant as it could be, for a separate existence or to be someone, is enough to cause one to be self-released from Elohim and to fall under the reign of the Demiurge Creator. This is what always happens at the, at the beginning of any Mahamambantara. It is not, as ignoramuses think, that the fall of Lucifer is something from the past. No, understand, this cosmic event is always occurring. Michael, which means he who is like God, represents Lucifer, the heavenly dragon, the Theomert Malogos, the prime emanation of the solar absolute and his angels who fights against the chaotic cosmic forces of the dragon are those who know and know that they know. The shadow 
of that heavenly dragon is the tail of the dragon, the Kundabafer organ, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceives the whole world, who was cast out into the earth with his Hasnamusen, or chaotic monads, who know not, therefore they prevail not. Yeshua, <coughs> Jesus, salvation, is not what many people believe it to be. Yeshua is Shin, Ingri, the fire, the triple Christic power of Christus Lucifer that transform yod he vav he of our own divine nature. Jesus is the light that emerges from within us when we defeat the tempting fire of our own inner Satan. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The light of the world is the solar light. In him Shin was life, and the life Shin was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, <clears throat> and the darkness comprehended it not. John 1 verses 4 to 5. We are associating this lecture with many quotations from the Bible. In order for you to see, in order to show you that just as all this happened within many of the prophets of the past, likewise it has to happen within all of us. This woman with child and crying while traveling in birth and pained to be delivered has to, has to repeat the same events within us. Such a woman is a feminine aspect of creation within us, yet it depends upon us if we want her to give birth to Christ within our heart. In order for her to give birth to Christ, we have to learn sexual alchemy, understand that Christ is born within us not only by believing in Jesus, but by handling the fire and the light that always enter into our body through what we think, eat, and breathe, or as the book of Genesis states, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day Elohim ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And Elohim blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which Elohim created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the that Yod Hava Elohim made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for Yod Hava Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not Adam to till the ground, but there went up a mist, a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground, and Yod Hava Elohim formed Adam of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And Adam became an afesh haya, a living soul. And yot Hava Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put Adam, whom he had formed. And out of the ground made yot Hava Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2 verses 1 through 9. As it is written, yod Elohim planted at the end of the seventh day the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The creators, the Elohim know, and they know that they know. Therefore, they know that knowledge is a necessity for those who know not. This is why the Elohim planted the tree of knowledge Otherwise, they will not have planted it. Such a tree represents Eve. Hava, 
the genital glands, whose hormones or fruits nourished Adam, the brain. Satan, the sexual potency in both genital areas, controls the tree of knowledge. So this is why Satan offered the fruits to Eve. Thus, every time that we perform the sexual act or use the sexual energy, it is our own individual particular Satan who tempts us to eat the fruit, that is, to satisfy our animal lustful appetites through the bestial orgasm, instead of sublimating our sexual hormones in order to nourish our brain by means of tantric alchemy. So everything depends upon our will. We could take advantage of the sexual act or be defeated by, by Satan. Temptation. The temptation of Satan written in the Bible, did not happen only in the past, but happens every time we perform the sexual act, because Satan is a sexual potency, and our Eve, or genitalia, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the sexual force. The tree of life represents our spinal medulla, both trees are in the middle of the garden, our physicality. It is also written that Jod Hava Elohim formed Adam of the dust of Adama, the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the Neshama of life, and Adam became an Efeshaya, a living soul. What does Nefesh Haya means in Kabbalah. Nefesh Haya is the soul of a monad that develops the characteristics of a living soul, according to Haya, the soul intelligence of Yod Hava Elohim, the Holy Spirit, in the animal kingdom and in the human kingdom of any planet of the universe. What is a lion? A lion is an Efeshaya that develops all of the necessary characteristics that are needed in order to be a lion. What is an eagle? An eagle is an Efeshaya that develops all the necessary characteristics that are needed in order to be an eagle. Cats, dogs, bull, horses, and all evolving animals are Nefesh Haya. Yet, if we state that all of us, the people of the earth, are Nefesh Haya, we will be stating something false, because we are not. We are Hayot with reasoning, and that is different. Hayot means beasts. In other words, we are not lions or eagles or cats or dogs. We are humanoids. We are not humans because we have not yet developed all the necessary characteristics that are needed in order to be a human being in the image of God. The Adam of the seventh day is an Efesh Haya already developed, a living soul with all the divine characteristics of a God incarnated in a human flesh. The Adam of the seventh day defeated his own particular individual Satan and therefore transformed his own Satan into Lucifer by means of the tree of knowledge or sexual alchemy. Haya means life and is the root word of Hava, which is translated into English as Eve, 
This is why it is written. And Adam called the name of his wife, Hava, Eve, because she was the mother of all high, the living. Genesis 3, verse 20. This is why Genesis states. And Yoth Hava Elohim formed Adam of the dust of Adama, and breathed into his nostrils. Neshamot Hayim, the breath of life, and Adam became an Afesh Haya, living soul. Thus, a human living soul, an Efesh Haya, is a sexual alchemical hormonal process of transmutation that transforms Adam into Adam Haya, or better said, into Adam Hava, into a lunar, solar, androgynous human being. This is a sexual alchemical transformation of Hava Eve, the power of sex, from Hayot into Haim, meaning from animal into human. So Eve, Hava, represents the sexual power of sex, the power of Lucifer. Nonetheless, we have heard people affirming, we are creatures made into the image of God, living souls made by God from the dust of the earth. To them we say that we do not think so, because if that is true, then God will be a very ugly, ignorant being. Nevertheless, we, the humanoids, are the only animals with reasoning. We are rational animals, or intellectual animals. Animal, from the Latin anima, meaning soul, who because of their intellect have the mental capacity to learn how to use their sexual hormonal potentiality in order to become an Efesh Haya. Thus, if we, as we are right now, in this our present psychosomatic situation, compare ourselves to the irrational Nefesh Haya, we must state that we, as humanoids, are not Nefesh Haya, and that is very sad. People of the earth pretentiously call themselves human beings, but they are nothing more than humanoids. <clears throat> humanoids can become human beings if <clears throat> they work alchemically in themselves. So it is very difficult to become an Efeshaya. Thus, for a better understanding of what an Efesh Haya, a living soul, is, let us give some examples. <clears throat> Jesus of Nazareth is an Efesh Haya. Moses, Krishna, Buddha, Gautama, Mohammed are Nefesh Haya. Yet, all of the followers of those masters are not Nefesh Haya, but intellectual Hayot, meaning intellectual beasts. So we are intellectual animals who can reach the level of human beings. We can also reach the level that those masters reached if we defeat our own individual particular Satan and transform him into Lucifer. And we can do it by sanctifying Malkut, the seventh day, or seventh Sephirah. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as Yod Hav Elohim has commanded thee. Six day thou shalt labor with sexual alchemy, and do all thy alchemical work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yod Hav thy God. Deuteronomy 5, verses 12 to 14. So, 
On Malkuth, the seventh day, Elohim ended his alchemical work, which he had alchemically made. Since he rested on Malkut, the seventh day, from all his alchemical work, which he had made. The seven days of Genesis relate to the seven lower Sephiroth. Thus, when we count the seven days, we start counting them from Hesed and from Malkut. Because Hesed is the Ruach Elohim, who rested on the Sabbath, Malkut, from all of his alchemical work which he had made upon the sexual creative waters of Malkut, our physicality. He said, does it under the law three, that is, under the guidance of the yod Elohim, represented by the trinity of Keter, Chokmah, and Binah, as we symbolically depicted him here in the first triangle, the tree of life, in the graphic. Thus, if we have a physical body, we can then start doing this alchemical work, because without it, we cannot. So our monad needs a physical body in order to perform the six days of Genesis. Now, if our monad wants to perform the last alchemical work described in the seventh day of Genesis, that is, to form Adam of the dust of Adama, the earth, and to make of him a living soul, in other words, to transform our physicality into a living soul, we need then to transform our own individual particular Satan into Lucifer. Remember, the dragon Lucifer was cast out into earth, into our physicality, into the night sphere, the center of the earth, which is sex. Lucifer is a sexual potency. So if our monad succeeds in doing it, then Elohim blesses the Sabbath, Lucifer, the seventh day, and sanctifies, because within the sexual potency, he rested from all of his work, which Elohim created and made. Let us now read some quotations about Satan from the writings of Anna Kingsford, a Gnostic seer from the 19th century who was quoted by Madame Blavatsky and by Matsi Samael on the Or. And on the seventh day there went forth from the presence of God a mighty angel, full of wrath and consuming fire. <coughs> and God gave unto him the dominion of Malkut, the outermost sphere. Eternity brought forth time, and boundless gave birth to limit. And this being, or mighty angel, descended into generation. Anna Kingsford Ben Shahar, the son of the dawn, the dragon, the prime emanation of the solar absolute, or in soft or, descends and penetrates the atmosphere of the earth. Yes, the solar light is the fire of the dragon, which is in the air that we breathe, in the water that we drink in the food that we eat. It is everywhere. The sun has placed certain solar seeds within the sexual glands of the intellectual animal, mistakenly called a human being, which then, when properly developed, can transform us into authentic humans. Samael Yet Genesis 1 verse 1 states, And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which yod Elohim had made. By means of uh, the metabolism, our body, the solar light or the fire of Ben Shahar, the son of the dawn, the dragon Lucifer, become the sexual potency, which Moses describes as Nahash Haya, a living serpent, more subtle than any Hayot 
a bestial force of Shada, the field which Yodhava Elohim had made in Malkut Asia, our physicality. So the serpent is an unfoldment of the dragon. Shada means breast, ghost, sphere, field. It relates to the sphere or area of the human body where the creative activities of Haya, life, or soul intelligence of Yod Chava Elohim, the Holy Spirit, are conducted. In other words, Shada addresses the tree of knowledge, Hebrew odds that at the top of the tree of knowledge is that when we look at the graphic of the tree of life that sphere above the breast over the throat which is that drumming uterus where the word is gestated and which has its roots in Yesod, the sexual sphere, where life is gestated. This is why Nahash Haya, the living serpent, appears in the tree of knowledge because this living force is a sexual force that is serpentine or encircles the tree of knowledge that represents the sexual glands of the male and female. The throat is a uterus where the word is gestated. Haya, life. Hayot, beasts. Hava, Eve. Are words that relate specifically to the male or female genitalia, to the sexual creative power of Malkut, which is a feminine sephira. Thus, Nahashaya, the living serpent, is the power of Lucifer, the Teomertmalogos the creative power of the solar absolute that penetrates in Malkut and that Elohim utilizes wisely. The Teomert Malogos knows and it knows that Yod Hava Elohim needs the sexual potency in order to create humans into their own image. This is why Yod Hava Elohim planted a garden its ward in Eden, in Yesod, in the sexual organs. And there he put Adam, whom he had formed. Since Yod Hava Elohim needs Adam to teach other souls how to create humans into their own image and likeness, and more living souls. Therefore, for such a task, Ben Shahar, the son of the dawn, places the solar light in the atmosphere of the earth, so that Yod Hava Elohim can make to grow out of Adama the ground every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life that is also in the midst of the garden in the tree of knowledge of good and evil as a habitat for the unfoldment of the solar light, the serpent. Humanoids who know that they know not need to learn how to take advantage of their tree of knowledge and understand that Nahash Haya, their living serpent, teaches them through temptation. And he, Nahash Haya, said unto the woman, the genitalia, 
Yeah, has Elohim said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Genesis 3, verse 1. Sexual temptation works as follows. When a couple, a man and a woman, are in love and kissing each other, the fire in their blood arouses. Then their blood reaches their sexual organs. Their genitalia respond with excitement. The male phallus gets an erection and the female vagina becomes humid. All of this is the outcome of the fire of Lucifer. Thus, this is how they are enticed to perform the sexual act. This is how the fire of Lucifer sexually unites them. And this is how Lucifer places them into temptation. Thus, if they control their sexual fire and sublimate their sexual hormones to their brain, they then defeated temptation. Thus, Lucifer carries the light into their darkness. Yet, if they do not know how to control the sexual fire, if they reach the orgasm of the beasts, then they fall into temptation and eject the light of Lucifer from their bodies and replace it with the bestial fire of Satan the shadow of Lucifer, who becomes the lord of their darkness. This is Kabbalistically and alchemically explained in Genesis 3. We need to know how to read it. Comprehend that Satan does not appear in Genesis in the form of a serpent just by accident. Understand that if the human body is divided into two sexes, it is in order for the serpent to act, since the serpent circulates within our blood. We need to learn how to create like gods and not like animals. This is why it is written. I said in mine heart concerning the present estate of the children of Adam, that Elohim might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which happens to the children of Adam happens to animals. Even one thing happens to them. As one dies, so the other dies. Yes, they have all one breath. And Adam has no advantage over the animals. For all are vanity. Who knows if the spirit of the children of Adam ascend upward, and if the spirit of the beasts descend downward. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 18, 19, and 21. Here we see these two paintings of William Blake. In one we see Lucifer before descending into animal generation. And in the other we see Raphael, who is one of his angels. He is instructing Adam and Eve. Raphael the Logos of Mercury, represents Shiva, who is the Lord of the Mercurial forces or sexual creative waters that we need to learn how to sublimate in order to acquire solar reasoning. Raphael is instructing Adam and Eve how not to resist evil but to learn how to eat like the Elohim from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, who is in heaven, is perfect. From Matthew 5, verse 48. Regrettably, as we already know, they did not eat like the gods, but like the beasts. And thus, they ejected Lucifer from their own anatomy, 
from their own particular individual Garden of Eden. Now, if we want to return into that lost Edenic condition, we need to suppress Satan, who abides within the earth, within our own anatomies. The book of Job perfectly illustrates how our monad or our Jehovah commands our own particular individual Satan when we are walking with Elohim on the initiatic path in order to return to that primeval state that we lost. The initiate here is represented by the man named Job in the land of Uz. Let us read. Now there was in the seventh day when the children of Elohim came to present themselves before Yodhava, and Satan came also among them. And Yodhava said unto Satan, From where have you come? Then Satan answered Yodhava and said, From going to and fro in Malkuth, the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And Yodhava said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? a perfect and an upright man, one that fears Elohim and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered Yodhava and said, Does Job fear Elohim for no reason? Hast not you made a hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he has on every side? You hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth your hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to thy face. And Yodhava said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of Yahweh. Job 1 verses 6 through 12. In these verses from the Bible, it is very clear that Satan, the shadow of Lucifer, is receiving orders from Jehovah. Notwithstanding, this happens to those initiates that manage to reach the top of the mountain of resurrection. Nevertheless, Satan is always in Malkut, the earth, our physicality, since the Theomertmalogos cannot enter into our body, because if the Theomertmalogos enters into our body to see what happens, he will burn us alive. Thus, uh, Satan, his shadow, knows what we do and what we don't do. We cannot hide from his shadow. Thus, it is through Satan that the Theomermalogos, who abides in the higher dimensions, knows everything. Therefore, I want you to understand that to become human is what counts. And what the sun is interested in is the creation of humans. The sun wants a harvest of solar humans, and in these moments it is working feverishly in order to achieve it. I want you to know that when a race loses all interest in solar ideas, the sun also loses all interest for that race and destroys it. In these moments, the sun wants to destroy this race because it is already useless for the experiment. However, before it destroys it, the sun performs a supreme effort. With great effort, the sun attains a harvest, albeit a small harvest of solar humans. Samael Aumbeod. So, when the Teomert Malogos descends, he destroys the generation of the earth with fire. Satan only fulfills his commands. Thus, in order for our inner God to know how we, who know the path, are doing the alchemical work, he calls his shadow and asks, How do you see my soul, my son, my daughter? Are they doing the work? Since they are studying the doctrine of the tree of knowledge, Gnosticism, are they doing the work or not? Then our inner particular individual Satan answers, Well, I come from going and to and fro in Malkut, the earth. 
and from walking up and down in their physicality. Thus, let me tell you, that fellow is a hypocrite who only blah, blah, blah. So let us test them and you will see that they do not do what they preach. Thus, our inner Yodhava said unto our own Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. This is how Satan comes and tests us through many ordeals in the internal and physical planes. Many Gnostics say, I am very humble and I am proud of it. Thus, their Satan says, you dimwit, such a humbleness is not humbleness. You do not know it, but your Satan does because he knows all sins. Thus, if he wants to know if what your mouth says is true, he tempts you. Many Gnostics say, I have no anger. Satan says, let's see if that is true. Then in the internal planes, he disguises himself and every subtly hurts your self-esteem and then you turn and attack him like a furious tiger. But Satan says, listen, sweetie, you cannot harm me, but only yourself. Got it? You then return into your body and said, damn it, this time he cut me. Thus you go and meditate in order to comprehend that anger and ask for the annihilation of it and say, that chaotic force of anger is no longer in me since I comprehended it and annihilated it. Your inner Satan hears you and say, okay, let's see if what you feel is true. Then he disguises himself again and tests you Test your patience. And then you're turned, you turn with anger and thunder with impatience and fail again and again and again. So temptation is fire and the triumph of a temptation is light. So we need Satan because without him, how are we going to know how lustful we are? How angry we are? How proud, vain we are. Indeed, Satan handles our internal chaos very well. Such is his speciality. Since he is the Lord of Chaos. <clears throat> this is why it is written. In the beginning, the earth was tohu vevohu in chaos. That is, formless and void. Darkness was upon the face of the abyss. And Haya, the spirit of God, moved upon the face of the sexual creative waters. And God said, Let there be light. And the light was because the spirit of God suppressed Satan in heaven. Thus, if you want light, suppress Satan within your consciousness. Because enlightenment is a very conscientious, conscious, cognizant work. Comprehend that higher life carries the light of men. Therefore, the light cannot shine in the darkness based on beliefs, but by suppressing the darkness of Satan, by means of comprehension of one's own self. This is how the devils of our darkness will fall under our authority. As lightning I beheld Satan fall from heaven, splendid in strength and fury. Among the Elohim is none like unto him, into whose hand are committed the kingdoms, the power and the glory of the worlds. Thrones and empires, the dynasties of kings, the fall of nations, the birth of churches, the triumphs of time. They arise and pass, they were and are not. 
The sea and the dust and the immense mystery of space devour them. Anna Kingsford. Isn't that beautiful? This is how the kingdom of God comes to us. Therefore, whosoever sees Satan sees the shadow of Christus Lucifer. And whosoever despises Satan despises Christus Lucifer. And those who despise Christus Lucifer despise the Theomertmalogos who sent him. So Satan is sent every time that we are going to be tested. But first, Satan is summoned by the Theomermalogos, who commands him to descend down to earth, our physicality. This is what is called to walk with Elohim on the path of initiation. It is an alchemical work, an internal work, that our inner God is doing within us. Listen! Without Satan, our inner God cannot do the alchemical work because God does not mingle with the lust that we carry within. But Satan, his shadow can. For Satan, this is possible, but we have to reach the level of knowing how to do it. Now let us read what the Bible says about this, that is, when Satan descends into generation. And Elohim looked upon Malkut, the planet Earth, and behold, it was sexually corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his sexual natural way upon the Earth. And El Elohim said unto Noah, better said, Noash, Nahash, the serpent, the end of all animal flesh, including the flesh of the humanoid, or intellectual animal erroneously called human, is come before me. For the earth is filled with sexual violence through them, the intellectual earthly animals. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Genesis 6, verses 12 and 13. Behold, this is how it happens, and it happens from within. People ignore that the destruction of Atlantis, or the antediluvian civilization, that happened before the beginning of this present civilization, and which is described not only in the Bible, but in many other sacred books, was made under the command of the God who controls the Elohim, who controls the forces of nature. This destruction also happened within those individuals who walked with those Elohim. Moreover, such destruction should happen within each one of us, here and now, since presently the earth is likewise, or even worse than those former times. It is filled with sexual violence, which degenerated people People applaud it. It is sad, yet it is true. The degenerated level that this humanity has reached corresponds to the very deep levels of hell. Thus, the way that such iniquity can be destroyed is by one of two ways. Namely, whether we do it by ourselves by walking the initiatic path, or nature will do it for us very violently. So, if we do not annihilate the iniquity that we carry within, with the help of those divine forces, then after physical death, our souls will descend through the law of devolution into the infernal levels of nature, into the infra dimensions of nature. Thus, down there, our ego will be destroyed because at the level that we are right now we are very dangerous for the kingdoms of nature and not only for our planet but also for the humanities of other planets humanoids are building cosmic ships rockets in order to reach mars etc and such an enterprise is dangerous for other humanities, because those humanities do not have the degeneration that we have here. 
earthlings are building again the Tower of Babel, and do not care about their own degeneration, but rather they want to enter into space and to carry their rottenness to other planets. Therefore, the shadow of the Elohim, which abide in the superior dimensions and of our own particular Elohim, will take us down there to the core of hell in order to clean or recycle us. Given that hell's scales has already surfaced to the earth. The tramp of armies, the voices of joy and of pain, the cry of the newborn babe, the shout of the warrior mortally smitten, marriage, divorce, division, violent deaths, martyrdoms, tyrannous ignorances, the impotence of passionate protest, and the mad longing for oblivion, the eyes of the tiger in the jungle, the fangs of the snake, the feeder of slaughterhouses, the wail of innocent beasts in pain, the innumerable incarnations of spirit, the strife towards manhood, the ceaseless pulse and current of desire. Anna Kingsford. Now let us read uh, how the prophet Isaiah sees our own particular individual Lucifer. That prime emanation of the solar absolute that in the beginning of this cosmic day descended carrying the light from heaven and thus enter it into our physicality in order to do the work that our own particular inner God wanted us to perform inside of us. Yet we drove him out through the orgasm and thus degrading him to work in animal generation. This happened to all of us, not only to the one individual as is symbolically written in Genesis. How hast thou fallen from the heavens to wail, O son of the dawn? Thou hast been cut from the heavens down to the ninth sphere, the womb of the earth, so that thou can dominate Malkuth. And thou said in thy heart, I will go up to the heavens above the stars of God, I will raise my throne, and I will dwell, brighten in the ides in the remote regions of the north. I will go up above the heights of a thick cloud as a thanksgiving to the Most High. Nonetheless, to Sheol thou art brought down, even to the inmost parts of the pit. Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 15. So this is precisely what happened inside us. Lucifer descended in order for our monarch to achieve the realization of the self through the sexual alchemical work, and thus go up with us, shining exceedingly above the heights of a thick cloud. Yet, all of the monads of this planet fail the test. Now, to Sheol, hell, we must be brought down, even to the inmost parts of the pit, unless we do the alchemical work up here on the surface of the earth, because there is a still hope if we want to change. This is what we teach, uh, this is why we teach Gnosis. <laughs> Yet if we say, come on, this is ridiculous. These teachings do not make any sense at all. I want to continue my life as it is and to do whatever my ego wants to do. If that is our resolution, then that protoplasmic part of ourselves will descend down to Sheol in order to be recycled. This recycling of the soul trapped in the protoplasmic bodies is not like the Catholic Church states, an eternal damnation. Such an eternal punishment will not be, uh, not only will be unjust, but stupid. The descent into Sheol takes at least the span of 1000 years. Such a process has a beginning and an end. This will not happen in this uh, three-dimensional world, but within eternity, the fifth dimension. Eternity is that dimension where we have our thoughts and feelings. All of us have thoughts and feelings, 
but no one can see them unless we express them through our words. Their mat matter does not vibrate in this three-dimensional world, but rather within eternity, our own inner particular fifth dimension. Thus, when our eternity descends into the infra-dimensions of eternity, we enter into the infernal worlds, but not forever. Eternity is a circle with a beginning and an end. The span of time that souls endure within the infra-dimensions of nature in order for the protoplasmic matter that forms our ego to be recycled is about uh, 1,000 years. A thousand years is the average span for those souls that did not build too much karma. Thus, it could be more than a thousand years. It all depends upon the malignity of our ego, of how heavily our ego is. So good people endure a thousand years when they enter into the abyss. Yet, people with an ego like Hitler, those who enjoy doing evil, well, they will endure there for thousand years or more. Who knows how long it will take in order to pay the karma that is owned. Remember, we generate karma, cause and effect through our actions. So evil souls are not free of karma. They need to pass through hell within the infra dimensions of nature to be free of it. So we might mock the law of men here in this three dimensional world, but we cannot mock the cosmic law down there in the circle of eternity. Let us now continue our reading from Anna Kinsford. These are his who, as a dragon bears all the Elohim on his shoulders, who establishes the pillars of necessity and fate. Many names has Elohim given him, names of mystery, secret, and terrible. Elohim called him Satan the adversary, because matter opposes spirit, and time accuses even the saints of the Lord. And Apollyon the destroyer, for his arm breaks and grinds to pieces. Wherefore the fear and the dread of him are upon all flesh. And the avenger, for he is the anger of God. His dragon's breath shall burn up all the souls of the wicked. And the sifter, for he strains all things through his sieve, dividing the husk from the grain, discovering the thoughts of the heart, proving and purifying the spirit of man. And the deceiver, for he makes the false appear true, and conceals the real under the mask of illusion. And the tempter, for he sets snares before the feet of the elect. He beguiles with vain shows and seduces with enchantments. Blessed are they who withstand his subtlety. They shall be called the children of God and shall enter in at the beautiful gates. For Satan is the doorkeeper of the temple of the king. He stands in Solomon's porch. He holds the keys of the sanctuary that no man may enter therein save the anointed, having the arcanum of Hermes. For Satan is the spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. He is the devourer of the unwise and the evil. They shall all be meat and drink to him. Whatsoever he devours, that shall never more return into being. Fear him, for after he has killed, he has the power to cast into hell. But he is the servant of the children of God, and of the children of light. They shall go before him, and he shall follow the steps of the wise. Anna Kingsford The shadow of the Theomert Malogos becomes a servant of the children of God and of the children of light, because within them he is the brightening Lucifer. So those who know and know that they know shall go before him, since he shall follow the steps of the wise. If we know that we are talking about here, we understand the former quotations 
which describe how he is within us. Faust, the great enchanted master from Germany, who was the inspiration for many poets and operatic writer musicians from Europe, is a great example. It is stated that Faust had a pact with the devil, or Satan, which is true, but he is not the only one. Many other masters, for instance, Jesus, had a pact with the devil when he was there in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And when he was with the wild beasts of the field, Jesus said unto him, Get the ends, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. And the angels ministered unto him. Moses also had a pact with Lucifer. The angel of the Theomer Malogos appeared unto him in a flame of fire out to the midst of a bush. And Christus Lucifer called unto him out of the midst of the burning bush and said, Moses, Moses. Moses triumphed. He transformed his Satan into Lucifer. This is why when descending from the Mount Sinai, the two horns of light from Lucifer were shining upon his head. Thus, the doctrine of Moses is the doctrine of Lucifer. We have to defeat Satan also and transform him into Lucifer. The battle against the legions of Satan which are inside of us. Satan fights by means of temptation against Michael, who is the Logos of the Son. The human soul is united with Michael, he who is like God, who fights against Satan, his shadow, who dwells in Malkut, our physicality. The angels of Michael have liberated the twelve tribes of Israel within themselves. Each tribe has many archetypes. Those archetypes are in heaven. These have to fight against the legions of Satan who have our own archetypes trapped within the matter. That Satan, who has the archetypes trapped within the matter of Malkut, is called Pharaoh in Exodus. It represents the intellect. The legions of angels that Satan controls are lust, anger, pride, greed, vanity, envy, gluttony, laziness, hatred, etc. You name them. Since there are so many and they are alive within each one of us. So those are the angels that Satan controls. Thus, there are, uh, or there is a war in heaven, meaning within the consciousness of the initiate, who is fighting against his own negative forces, his own chaotic forces. This is a holy war. Thus, if he triumphs, he becomes a Buddha, or an enlightened one. But Lucifer is not going to bring us the light that easily, since enlightenment only comes after fighting against Mara, the demon of darkness, inside of us. So the fight is not external but internal. It is not, as people think, that we have to enter into their sect in order to be saved. What you have to do is to enter into yourself and ask for the Savior in order to develop that knowledge within you and to fight with your God against the legions of Satan, which right now have taken control of your life and everybody's life, since this is why the, why the whole planet has now become a hell. This is obvious. Stand in awe of him and sin not. Speak his name with trembling, and beseech God daily to deliver thee. For Satan is the magistrate of the justice of God. 
He bears the balance and the sword to execute judgment and vengeance upon all who come short of the commandments of God, to weigh their works, to measure their desire, and to number their days. For to him are committed weight and measure and number, and all things must pass under the rod and through the balance and be fathomed by the sounding lead. Therefore Satan is the minister of God, Lord of the seven mansions of Hades, the angel of the manifest worlds. And God hath put a girdle about his loins, and the name of the girdle is Death. Threefold are its coils, for threefold is the power of death, dissolving the body, the ghost, and the soul. And that girdle is black within, but where Phoebus Apollo strikes, it is silver. None of the gods is girt save Satan, for upon him only is the shame of a generation. He has lost his virginal estate, uncovering heavenly secrets, he has entered into bondage. He encompasses with bonds and limits all things which are made. He puts chains round about the world and determines their orbits. By him are creation and appearance, by him birth and transformation, the day of beginning and the night of death. The glory of Satan is the shadow of the Lord. The throne of Satan is the footstool of Adonai. Twain are the armies of God, in heaven the hosts of Michael, in the abyss the legions of Satan. These are the unmanifested and the manifested, the free and the bound, the virginal and the fallen, and both are the ministers of the Father, fulfilling the word divine. Anna Kingsford Anna Kingsford's explanations are beautiful, very profound and clear, when we know Kabbalah and alchemy. So we know that she is uh, she's talking about Kabbalah and alchemy. Obviously Satan, the shadow of the Lord, is the king of hell, and he does what he has to do. And if we fall into his temptation, we descend with him into hell. The Theomertmalogos does not mingle with the abortions from hell, but his shadow does. Since the shame of the degeneration in which we are never falls upon the Logos, but upon Satan, his shadow, who knows what is what he has to do, as marvelously explained by this Gnostic seer from England. The legions of Satan are the creative emanations, having the shapes of dragons, of titans, and of elemental gods forsaking the intelligible world, seeking manifestation, renouncing their first estate, which were cast out into chaos, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Evil is the result of limitation, and Satan is the lord of limit. He is the father of lies, because matter is the cause of illusion. Anna Kingsford Now, if you are wondering, how is it that the physicality of the great initiates always dies at the end of their mission? And why is it that their physical death is always shrouded with mystery? Well, comprehend that the initiate has to pay his kamaduro so that his nefesh, the soul of the cells of his bones and flesh or physical body, will be absorbed by Saturn Vina, Haya, the Holy Spirit, and thus to become an Efeshaya, a living soul. So after all of the tests that Satan places upon the initiate, the book of Job states, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. Yod Hava gave, and Yod Hava has taken away. Blessed be the name of Yod Hava. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Job 1, verses 20 to 22. Nevertheless, after all of this, the initiate that is atop of the mountain of resurrection has to fade the final test that Satan will place upon him under the command of Jehovah. The book of Job states, Again there was in the end of the Sabbath day when the children of Elohim came to present themselves before yod and Satan came also among them to present himself before yod And yod said unto Satan, 
from where have you come? And Satan answered Yathaba and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And Yathaba said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and an upright man, one that fears Elohim and turns away from evil? And still he holds fast his integrity, although thou moved me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered Yothava and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. And Yothava said unto Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but save his nefesh soul. Job 2, verses 1 through 6. So, understand that Satan, the herald of yod is the serpentine esh, fire, that rides in our sexual glands, in our Hava, Eve, and in our bones and flesh. That's why it is written. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called Isha, woman, because she was taken out of Aish, man. Satan, the fire of Yasod, never gets tired of his job. Thus we had to defeat him in the flesh. Satan says to our inner God, Skin for skin, meaning nefesh for nefesh. Blood is paid with blood. All that a man has will give for his nefesh. Thus, if you allow me to touch his bones and flesh with an impure sickness, you will see how he will curse you to thy face. This is precisely the alchemical work of God upon us, between the souls Haya and Nefesh, between the light of Binah and its shadow in Malkut. And as it happened to Job, it has also happened to any initiate that reaches such heights, such initiatic levels, and who wants to have Satan at their service. If the initiate triumphs over the temptation of Satan, then Haya, Yodhava, will absorb Nefesh, and the initiate will achieve resurrection. Then, thus Nefesh Haya, thus resurrected living souls, will have Satan at their service, since Satan is the shadow of yod and whatever Haya, yod commands Satan to do, he will do. Yet, if we invoke Satan in this moment and say to him, I want you to do whatever I want, Satan will laugh with a big guffaw in our very face and say, You foolish ignorant, don't you know that it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, and thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve? Thus, if you defeat my temptations, and get absorbed by Haya, the Holy Spirit, my Lord and God, then I will not tempt you anymore, and I will serve you, because I shall not tempt the Lord my God. But now, your nefesh is sinful and does whatever I want, because you are a slave of your own desires. So Satan went forth from the presence of Yathava and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a pot's herd to scrape himself with, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, You speak as one of those foolish women speak. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job 2 verses 7 to 10. So read the book of Job, because his trials continue through many pages. Study it and learn how the initiate, a holy man, is tested by Satan under the command of God. Think, if a holy man is tested in that way, how about, how about us? 
we who are sinful, degenerated souls. Notwithstanding, if we get sick, do not blame Satan for it, because sicknesses are the outcome of the karma that we have built in the past, and also the outcome of the ignorant ways of living and the outcome of many other weak and wicked, wicked reasons. Thus, if you enter into the path, do not assume that you are going to mock the law, for Satan is the magistrate of the justice of God. He bears the scale and the sword to execute judgment and vengeance upon all who come short of the commandments of God, to weigh their works, to measure their desire, and to number their days. For to him are committed weight and measure and number. Yes, Christ forgives the sins of the world, but Christ does it if we do not curse God to his face. Remember. The blasphemy against Hayah, the Holy Ghost, shall not be forgiven unto men. Thus whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against Hayah, the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Matthew 12, verses 31 and 32. To understand the secret of the kingdom of God and to read the riddle of Maya, this is to have Satan underfoot. He only can put Satan underfoot who is released by thought from the bonds of desire. Nature is the allegory of spirit. All that appears to the sense is deceit. To know the truth, this alone shall make men free. For the kingdom of Satan is the house of matter. Yea, his mansion is the sepulchre of Golgotha, wherein on the seventh day the Lord lay sleeping, keeping the Sabbath of the, Sabbath of the unmanifested. For the day of Satan is the night of spirit, the manifestation of the world of form is the rest of the world in formulae. Holy and venerable is the Sabbath of God, blessed and sanctified is the name of the angel of Hades, whom the anointed shall overcome, rising again from the dead on the eighth or first day of day of the week for the place of satan is the goal born of divine impulsion there is the arrest of the outgoing force loose the station of pause and slumber the stone where jacob lay down and dreamed beholding lucifer the ladder which reached from earth to heaven anna kingsford the serpent is the holy sabbath of the lord it is the sexual power in the tree of knowledge that Satan uses in order to tempt the soul. Let us study the third commandment. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as Yotzhab Elohim has commanded thee. This means, keep your sexual potency, the serpent. Do not spill higher the life of God. Sanctify it. Transform Satan into Lucifer. Since Satan, the shadow of Haya, is the Lord of the seventh day. Malkut, the seventh sephira, your physicality. So to keep the Sabbath, to sanctify it, does not only mean to keep the tradition of resting every Saturday, which is the seventh day of the week, in order to worship the Lord in our bodies through sex, meals, and all sorts of rituals. To keep the Sabbath day, to sanctify it, is to sanctify our physicality through chastity, and to also keep our nefesh, soul, holy, by overcoming all types of temptations from Satan. Such is to keep the Sabbath holy. Satan is the Sabbath, the shadow of the Lord, the rustic stone. Remember that the color of the seventh planet Saturn is black, as is the shadow of the Lord. Thus, if your inner Satan is testing you with many ordeals, and you are not overcoming the ordeals, you are not then keeping the Sabbath holy, because you are not sanctifying it. Not even if you, keep, you are keeping every single Saturday of every single week of all the months and years of your entire life. 
Sanctify the stone of Yesod, as Jacob did. For Jacob is the planetary angel Icus, Bacchus or Dionysus, the lord of the body, who hath left his father's house and has gone out into a far country. Yet it is loose, none other than Bethel, the kingdom of Satan, is beyond, become the kingdom of God and of his Christ. For there the anointed awakens, arising from sleep, and goes his way rejoicing, having seen the vision of God, and beheld the secret of Satan. Even as the Lord arose from the dead, and break the seal of the sepulchre, which is the portal of heaven, loose, the house of separation, the place of stony sleep, where is born the centripetal force, drawing the soul upward and inward to God, recalling existence into being, resuming the kingdoms of matter and spirit, until Satan return unto his first estate and enter again into the heavenly obedience, having fulfilled the will of the Father and accomplished his holy ministry, which was ordained of God before the worlds for the splendor of the manifest and for the generation of Christ our Lord. Who shall judge the quick and the dead, putting all things under his feet? Whose are the dominion, the power, the glory, and the amen? Anna Kingsford Lucifer is the ladder that Jacob saw in his dreams. Lucifer is the ladder to ascend up to heaven. Lucifer is the ladder to descend down to hell. As we see, Jacob rested his head upon the stone of Yesod. Jacob is the same Iacus, Bacchus, or Dionysius, the lord of the body or our physicality. The head over the stone means intoxication of the soul in the pineal gland, in heaven, by means of the transmutation of the creative water of life into the wine of the spirit. This when we defeat the temptation of Satan in the very sexual act. Yet, those souls that during bacchanalias become enticed with the sexual creative forces of their bodies fall under the temptations of Satan and become intoxicated with lust, liquor, and drugs, and thus fall with Satan headlong down into hell. Bacchanalias, orgies, are common in this day and age. Not only are they slaves of those forces, but moreover, they ingest other substances like alcohol, drugs, in order to become more intoxicated with the forces of hell. Obviously, the chaotic forces of Satan are controlling them. Thus, instead of transforming Satan into Lucifer, in order to enter into the Absolute, they transform their Satan, Satan into a demon, and like that they enter into Hell. Rare are the souls that control the forces of Dionysius, which enter naturally within their bodies. Now, in order to better understand what we are explaining here, let us read what is written in the Gospel of Mark in relation with Satan. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John at the Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit drove him out into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. Mark 1, verses 9 through 13. So the sexual potency came up out of the creative sexual waters of Jesus and opened up his pineal gland. And thus he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit descending upon his head. And immediately after that, the Spirit took him into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, because this it has, it must be. If the Spirit descends on us and we are not tempted, 
Then what is the purpose for that spirit to descend on us? We need to develop virtues, and the ones who will help us to do it, if we open the doors of heaven, will be Satan, the shadow of the Lord. If we defeat him, when, when under temptation, Jesus defeated his own Satan, as it is written in the Gospels. But how many Jesuses are in this humanity? We know only one. So how is it that the same spirit that descended into Jesus drove him out into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan? It is because the Holy Spirit and Satan, his shadow, are the same. This is why it is written. Verily I say unto you, all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost has never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Mark 3, verses 28 through 29. Eternal damnation means to enter into eternity into the infernos, or infra-dimensions of the fifth dimension, into hell. But as we said, this devolution has its beginning and its end. To blaspheme against the Holy Spirit is not to misuse the sexual energy of our body. How do we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost? We do it through fornication, adultery, homosexuality, lesbianism, prostitution, pedophilia, masturbation, and all of that violence against the sexual force, which is the force of the Holy Spirit, and which is very common in this day and age on the planet Earth. We also blaspheme against the Holy Ghost through what we say, because the throat is another uterus where the war is gestated by the inner sexual force of God. Thus, what we say, what we teach, what we preach, is coming from the throat. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. John 1, verses 1 through 5. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis. Thus man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, verse 4. Neither shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. Thus let your communication be, yes, yes, no, no, for whatsoever is more than these comes of evil. Matthew 5, verses 36 and 37. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe it not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Saddam and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak, but these speak evil of those things, which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute priests, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and run greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Jude 1, 5 to 11. Now, allow us to tell you in a Kabbalistic and alchemical manner that the Leviathan, the shadow of Ben-Shahar, the son of the dawn, 
the heavenly dragon, descended from the ocean of life through a river of light into the Garden of Eden and was cut by Adam and Eve in the Tree of Knowledge while taking the form of a serpent. Being stuck on earth, he was unable to transform back into his dragon form. Ben Shahar, his father, despite being a mighty heavenly dragon, was unable to do anything, while his son, the Leviathan, was on earth. Distressed, the Leviathan called out for help to all the heavens and earth. Hearing his cry from the ace of Or, Quan Shi Yin, the Bodhisattva of Compassion, quickly descended and told Adam and Eve to give back the Leviathan. The serpent at this point was about to be cooked by Adam's wife, since it was causing quite a stir in her blood, as well as in the blood of Adam, since it was alive and riding around their bodies after being caught. This created a lot of tension among the beasts of the field. Adam's wife concluded that this striking situation meant that she and Adam must eat the serpent so that this will grant them immortality. And so, vehemently, Adam's wife wanted to eat the snake. Soon an intense struggle between Adam and Eve began, where Adam was easily vanquished. Adam begged Eve to spare the life of the serpent. Adam's wife was now enraged at Adam for his daring to move her away from eating the serpent. When Ben Shahar, the son of the dawn, the heavenly dragon, fired his thundering voice from heaven saying, Nahashaya, the living serpent, must definitely belong to Adam who tries to save it, and not to Eve, who tries to eat it. Eve, realizing her shameful action and desire, withdrew. Thus, Quan Shi Yin brought the serpent back to Ben Shahar, who promptly returned it to the Sea of Life. There, the serpent transformed itself back into the Leviathan, and exceedingly joyful, swan bearing Quan Shi Jin on his shoulders. Those who, therefore, curse Satan, curse the cosmic reflection of God, the Holy Spirit. They anatomize God made manifest in matter or in the objective. They maledict God or the ever incomprehensible wisdom, revealing itself as light and shadow, Quan Shi Yin and the dragon, right and wrong in nature, in the only manner comprehensible to the limited intellect of the rational animal mistakenly called human. The king of the nations is the shadow of Adonai, Satan, the fear of yod who is also the beginning of wisdom. Satan scarce ignoramuses, yet the righteous rule over the fear of God. Amen. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? 
Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you.